Uh, now we come to the plot uh, while we are uh, following our lessons. In the plot, of course, action is so important element. Let's go on with uh, the definition of the action of the plot. The action of tragedy is of a serious nature. It is not trivial. It must have a greatness. It is concerned with the great issues of life and death, and especially the relation of a man to gods and man in himself. So there is a link between man to gods and man himself. The action of tragedy is complete. So the action must be completed at the end of the play. It cannot be left uh, unsolved. Everything will be solved in the end of the tragedy. That is to say, it must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Moreover, it should be of a certain length. This is so important again. In a certain length, everything must be told, short enough to be viewed at a sitting, and long enough to show the change of fortune and recognition. So these are the main important elements for the action. First of all, as, I, as we said before, let me give you in uh, summary. Death is inevitable, as I said before. And also the main character's contribution to God's and himself is important. The action of the tragedy must be complete. There must be a length starting with beginning, a middle and end. And also it should have a certain length. Again at the tragedies there were the three unities. One of them is the unity of action, for example, action should contribute to the central idea. So the action must be related to the main idea of the play. It exists if nothing included in the play can be omitted, erased, and nothing really relevant can be added. Action for Aristotle, plays, the setting of the play, for example, and time are so important main elements. Just keep in your mind. When we come to the unit of place and time, according to Ar Aristotle, again, Greek tragedy tries to keep within a single circuit of the sun, a single day. So, the whole play, the tragic play, must be done during a single day. Of course, you can just imagine that. During that time, there was not any electricity. All the performances were held during the uh, sunlight time. So it must be started, continued, and concluded, finished at the end of the single day. This has limitations, and these limitations are overcome by double double chronology. What's that? The action which takes place on stage, starts on the stage, begins at dawn. At the, uh, when the sun is just appearing, it must start on the stage and ends before dusk at the sunset. But the action which is supposed to take place off stage is handled with extreme freedom. For example, I should have said in, uh, at the Trojan War, Agamemnon opens with down, comes on the stage with down, on the night when Troy is being taken. So, during that time, everything must be done. Uh, Greek soldiers must capture Troy and 
Troy must be taken. But Agamemnon returns from Troy in the course of the play war takes place off stage. So everything cannot be uh, shown on the stage by the actors. It sometimes uh, gives to the interpretation of the audience what happened in the end. And we talk about the Unitop plays as well. It didn't belong to Aristotle. It meant the play had to take place at the same location. So the location is so limited in this sense, just say uh, a stage, for example, as we said before, it's called Scanner uh, in the old times of Greek. It must take place at the same location. This limitation was overcome, sold, pay attention again, by the aid of the messenger. So, messenger was so important at the old Greek tragedies as well. What's the function of messenger? He brings the news of the action off the stage to the stage. In a way, like a chorus, messenger tells us what happened off the stage that the audience didn't watch. So the audience is enlightened again by the messenger and tells what's happened during the offstage time. So as uh, chorus was so important for the old Greek tragedy, messengers were so important again. We are just following our papers. Absence of violence deeds. Whatever the violence happened, for example. There is no bloodshed on the stage. So keep in your mind that. There were no any blood uh, happened on the stage. So the killing didn't occur on the stage. It became off the stage. So this uh, is done by the messenger to the audience, as you can easily understand. Such violent actions happened off the stage and the messengers brought the news of it to the audience on the stage. Just keep again uh, in your mind again that some of uh, Shakespeare's tragedies as well, you will come across the clink uh, or bloodshed scenes, let's say, not on the stage, but off the stage. We are continuing again. Plausibility of plot and action. The plot of a tragedy should be <coughs> relevant to the world we live in must be related to the world we live in. I am just talking about that time, for example. The tragedy should deal with action. Of course, there must be always action at the tragedies that has happened or might happen. In a way, tragedy is an, pay attention again, an imitation of life. So, the dramatists mostly did the imitation of life. They brought the stage, the imitation of life at that time. And life consists of action. So our life, in our modern life, for example, our life is not uh, stable. It is mobile, not immobile. Generally, Greek tragedy takes its plus, plot sorry, from saga or legend. Another main point is that generally Greek tragedies took its their plots from saga or legends. 
anything happen in the plot should either be necessary or likely. The things a character says or does should follow each other. For example, there should be cause and effect. Just keep in your mind that those two words again, that will be so helpful for your further lessons. Cause, what caused the plot? Why did Achilles die, for example? What's the cause of it? And the effect, for example. The effect in this sense is that he is dead, he is killed. So there should be a cause and effect relationship. A plot should start and develop out of itself. So the plot will come out from cause and effect relationship. Aristotle is again against Deus ex machina in our previous lessons. I am sure you must have read it uh, in our papers. Deus ex machina, let me tell you something about that. Uh, it was a very easy way for the dramatist to get some help from the gods mostly when unsolved things are not sold during the play. So gods come to the earth, mainly on the stage, and helps the main character for the resolution of the uh, problematic situation of the play during that time. So God's helped in this sense, and it is called Deus Ex Machina. In a Turkish sense, uh, machine, let's be say, machine in a way, just lowers down on the stage, and God or goddess, or let's say gods uh, in a way, comes out of the machine, machina, and try to solve the problems on the stage. So, so far as we talk uh, many things that, for example, everything was solved at the end of the tragic play, whatever the play was at that time. So, Deus Ex Machina, which was a device to solve the plot, which is impossible to solve otherwise. The actor who played the part of a god was brought to the stage by means of mechanical device. It was used to solve plots which are so complicated that only a god or god sometimes can solve them. It was also employed for other effects such as to foretell the future of a character or to interpret an action for the audience being an authority. So, for the end of our lesson, I am sure you are getting some uh, information about uh, what, how we will deal with our lessons through internet and just keep your uh, papers with you as I uh, uh, uploaded in our lessons PDF uh, paper I, I mean so you can easily follow all these things from papers well that's all for the time being I would like to tell you keep in touch with us through messages or through uh, emails in a way see you next week